Okay, so we're at Epworth Church. Um, they have very kindly let us come in and cook today. Mm -hmm. And of course, as you can see, me and uh, Sue are wearing our masks because masks, not masks. We are so not ready for math. <laughs> uh, we are in our mask because we want to protect our health. Right, so I'm going to step out of the camera screen and let, let you take over, but I'll read you the recipe. Yeah, Sue is going to tell me what to do. Oh, I'm um, good at that. Today we're going to be making some really good recipes. We're going to be making, um, right now, right now we are making a beefy baked ravioli, which is a lot like a lasagna. Um, lasagna is great, I love lasagna, but there's a lot of prep work involved. And I, I, um, we found this recipe and we wanted to simplify the lasagna process for you. Um, as you can see, we have some ingredients all ready to go for you. Um, so where do we want to start? Well, that's a good question. I actually tried this recipe at home. It is fantastic, Melissa. So. I'm really excited to um, cook with you. And the very first step is getting your pan ready. Okay. And look at that, we've got a pan. Now what's wonderful about this recipe is, you can see this is about a nine by nine pan. Yep. But the recipe is made for a nine by 13 inch pan. Right. So, so we have already created one of these ravioli dishes and we've got it in the oven ready to come out. Um, this one, we're actually going to put tin foil on top and Melissa's going to bring it home and freeze it it's freezing. and then pull it out um, at a later date right. and she'll have a just a freezer meal ready right. to go. So and right around the holidays when, you know, in between Thanksgiving and Christmas and you don't know what to cook, you'll have a ravioli lasagna type recipe that you can just pull out. And if you do this in a nine by nine and another nine by nine, then you'll have two meals. So it's really economical. And all of the ingredients that you see that we use today has been found locally. It is in our local grocery store. So you don't have to travel to Fargo or Jamestown or anywhere else just to get this stuff. You can if you want to, obviously, but I did find everything here. You know what? Let's go through the rest. Let's go through the ingredients. Okay. So we've got ravioli. Yep, ravioli. Right? Now there are two ways we can buy ravioli. We can buy this, which uh, Melissa found in the refrigerated section. Doesn't need to be cooked at all. We're just going to make the the ravioli without cooking it, which is very simple. Yep. The other way is to buy it frozen, boil the noodles for a few minutes, put it into a colander, let them drain, and add a little olive oil so right. they don't stick. Yeah. Either way, it works perfectly fine. Um, and then the next one is onion, cloves, ground beef, and pork sausage. And we actually have already done that. So, so this says uh, diced onions, minced garlic, um, browned ground beef, browned ground beef, browned ground pork. Yep. And was there anything And else? then, nope. And then we poured in our two jars of pasta sauce. Spaghetti, ma mozzarella or marinara sauce. Yep, marinara sauce, right. And then we also have two kinds of cheese. Yep, we got mozzarella and Italian. Mm -hmm. So after we've cooked all our meat and onions and garlic and added the pasta sauce, we're ready to layer our ravioli. This is a great kid's meal because it's so hands-on and we all know that kids love cooking when they can actually get in literally and get their hands a little yep. dirty. I told, uh, I told, Su I told Sue, I'm probably going to make a mess. So, so the first thing she's doing is taking some of the, the meat sauce mixture, just a very, very thin sauce. And she's putting it in the bottom of our, our pan. And the next thing she's going to do is take some of the ravioli and she's going to be layering it above the meat sauce. So we've got two layers in there right now. And you notice while she's layering, I'll just speak to some of the tools that we're using. She's got a spatula, or sometimes we call it a rubber scraper. And this is the spatula or rubber scraper that she's using. Um, and it's always good when you're in the kitchen to know your tools. One thing we didn't mention. I bet is... you a lot of guys say that too in the garage. <laughs> know your tools. That's right. It's always fun to buy tools, yeah. right? So one thing we didn't mention is that we washed our hands yep. before we got into the kitchen. 
So we washed them for how many seconds? Do you remember? I didn't count, but I did sing happy birthday <gasps> twice. Oh my goodness, that's so awesome. So we know we're safe, our hands are clean. Yep. So the next thing she's gonna do is take some of the mozzarella cheese. If you'd like to measure, you certainly can. So she's putting about a half a cup of mozzarella cheese on top of the ravioli. Kind of got clumpy there. <laughs> and the next is the same amount of Italian um, Italian blend cheese. Nice flavoring there. And I, I told I'm a messy baker, so here's my messy baker coming into play here because I'm getting. You know what? And I told her messy bakers are the best bakers. <laughs> And now we're going to put another layer of sauce on. We need to have one more layer of sauce. Don't, don't use it all up. Okay, one more layer. After this. So save save one, save enough for the last, the final oh, layer. No, I like it saucy, so <laughs> saucy. <laughs> now we're just going to repeat the layers. Okay. So we're going to put our ravioli back on top. Okay, hey, more ravioli. Just think how much fun kids would have oh, putting I know. this together. Especially like if you're using the little squares, you're like, okay, count how many squares. So, so it you, could be a math lesson. Great, so we got, we got one, two, three, four, five squares. And we keep going along. You know, and you just go one, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three, four, five, and so you've got four across, down five, time is five, and then you'd get, what, 20. Mm -hmm. We're gonna add a whole other roll. Oh, we're gonna have, so five times five is, you guys know? Mm. Mm, that's tricky. That's 25. Five times five. I, I memorized my math tables when I was in third grade, so. So now we're gonna just add another little bit of cheese. And what's beautiful about cooking like this is, look at that, she's not even measuring in this. I I'm know, I, I, I really like cheese. I'm an avid measurer, and I so, tell you what, what's fun about this recipe is you can really go off, um, off on your own. Yeah, and I like the Italian blend a lot, so. So she's mixing a little bit of more mozzarella in there. Perfect. There's all the mozzarella. That's awesome. Very, that's the, that's the uber cheesy layer. There we go. The uber cheesy layer. And finally layer. she's gonna top it with the sauce and then we're gonna wrap it tight in tin foil and we'll put it in the oven. And when it's done, we're gonna pull it out and we'll show you the end product. Actually, yeah, this is the one that's gonna get frozen. Oh, that's right. This is the one that's gonna get frozen. So we'll show you, um, we got the one that's gonna bake for today in the oven right now. The oven is set for 375 mm -hmm. and it bakes for uh, about 45 minutes um, and then if you freeze it that's a di I think you let it set out all day and, or you set it out overnight and then I can't, I can't remember the instructions mm -hmm. no you're right oh I let you let it sit out we're gonna well we're gonna put it in the fridge put it in the fridge yeah you put oh yes you put it in the fridge to just thaw to thaw mm -hmm. and then um you and bake if it, it doesn't get thawed totally that's okay it's all right so then yes. it, so, but it might it takes longer to bake doesn't it yep it will this one this one's gonna take about an hour total and the next one will take about an hour hour and a half let's see Look at that. Now we can top it with, actually, the recipe says to top it with uh, plastic wrap. To freeze it? Yep. All right, because I have, normally to bake it, you just put tin foil on it. Probably to freeze it, I'd probably recommend putting plastic wrap and then tin foil it on anyway, just to protect it from freezer burn. Because yep. freezer burn, man. That'll ruin your dinner. So the other thing I want to mention is on top of the tin foil, make sure that you write what the item is, the date that you made this. And I would also put the baking directions right on there. That's a good idea. Yep. And then you're ready to go. Yep. Okay. Well, we'll see you in a bit when our ravioli's done. Yeah. In the oven.
Again, we're gonna switch gears and we're gonna check on our beefy ravioli. Wow, that looks awesome. That looks really, really good. Now we can let it sit for 10 minutes. Did we? And then it's going to be easier to cut. Yes. 